I'm sitting here with uh, Poets of the Fall. Uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Mark. I'm Oli. Right, and what do you do in the band? Well, I play the guitar. And I'm the singer. All right, so uh, how did you start start the band? Uh, well, basically, we started by sitting at, at Oli's car uh, at the harbor because we were playing at another band for, for about a couple of years. By that time, we sort of became very good friends during that time and realized that we had the similar kind of goals and we wrote music together very well. And then just one day we decided that this car was going to be our office and we were going to sit there and, and, and plan what we were going to do with our lives and stuff like that. So we decided that, you know, we'd form Poets of the Fall. We didn't have a name at that time. We just decided to form a band of our own and start writing music and see how far that would ever take us. 
that's that's the uh, the original story of it seriously yeah. Yeah. and ollie's car was like our our office which yeah was a for nice a long thing. time yeah. yeah he doesn't have it anymore though mm. so how did you come up with the name um that was um that was just fiddling around with ideas and, and words that we sort of thought would describe our music and the mood mood in the music very well and uh i wrote down loads and loads of different names we had like two papers full of names just like row by row names until suddenly we came up with this idea of poets of the fall and you know i showed it to ollie and i've been thinking about this and he goes yeah that's it and you know we didn't have to think about it anymore yeah that's right yeah so how would you describe your sound then well it it, it has like you know the same way as our name the sound has like really powerful two sides so it has the soft sort of uh, mellow ballady kind of sound and then we have this really hard grinding you know metal type of sound which is uh, and it's always we're like in a constant flux we're always developing and, and getting new ideas and maybe like the next album will be a lot different than the, than the second one was and so on uh, let's talk about your uh, first album Signs of Life All right. uh, so how how are the plans uh for the albums born like how, how did you come up with the idea of let's make an album to sound this way um sound wise i would say it would um that was something that we worked we worked on the album for a little over a year all in all and that was a very big sort of uh learning process because we just gotten together the three of us we learned the ways that we work in you know individually he, each of the three of us and then um to work together and then to find the sounds you know actually to find the vocabulary that we could use to if i wanted to sound like this and what words am i going to use so that he gets my point and so it was a learning process the whole thing of that but even then we realized that we didn't really have any ideas about you know how it's supposed to be when it's finished it's just that when we were writing the songs we had this idea that you know we wanted to uh we wanted to be bright or light or heavy or something like that it was just you know we really really just tried to get out from from the from the table what we heard inside our heads it's uh yeah. I, I can't really put it better. Do you have it? Uh... Well, I, I just can remember that uh, we actually did only one song at a time and uh, after we finished it uh, or, or almost finished it, then then I guess we had a compilation of songs and we were listening to them and just trying to figure out that is this what we are after i guess it was uh, the whole year was a process of looking what we are after and uh, and uh, we actually uh, recorded uh, like 24 uh, songs so um after that it was quite easy to to find the uh the mutual sound for those 12 songs that were actually um uh, selected to the album to the album yeah, yeah. And we had 60 we, we sort of got it down to 16 songs and then we had a really yeah. hard time getting those four songs yeah, out of there yeah. which wouldn't like belong in the album because we really liked all those 16 songs so much yeah but it, i remember that it was a nice time to ha have sort of a open field for, for you just to gather up ideas and we did uh, some punk songs And uh, we did a variation of ballads and, uh, of course, the songs that are on the album, to, just to figure out what we wanted to do. And it was also a time of, of looking for the right sort of uh, topic, you know, signs of life, and which is about all these little occurrences in, in your daily life that leaves a mark on you. And these are the signs of life that you sing about. So just, you know your every everyday daily life and your emotions and and what happens in in life and how they affect people and and how they and it seemed that the lyrics seemed to touch a lot of people so that you know I got the got the feeling that that these are like topics that really touch a lot of people that they they happen to everyone so and that was also a time of looking for that for that and then doing the album cover and trying to decide you know what we're gonna like be like the three of us or or like six of us or how we're gonna look and you know all that
think we really strive for any any particular kind of sound. It's just uh, it's something that comes out naturally, and then later yeah. on, when when your album is you know it's finished and you're holding in your hand, you put it in the CD player and listen to it, and you sort of get the idea. Wow, this this is what we've been doing the past few months or, <laughs> yeah. or a year or so, you know. And you, you always see the result in retrospect, basically. So how do you write the songs? Uh, is it m- music first, or is it lyrics, or? Well, I guess it's always the well. Usually, it is music first. Music first. Yeah. But there are there have been cases where lyrics lyrics have come first. That's right. Sometimes um, I write the lyrics myself. So sometimes I have an idea which is so strong that the lyrics just sort of pour out, and, and you you get this whole thing. And and when you write the lyrics, you also sort of you already hear what it's going to sound like, and then. Then the difficult part is to sort of you know get the idea across to uh, Ollie and uh, Captain for that matter, so that they also know that what we're looking for. So how how involved are everyone in the writing very, process? Yeah, very, very involved. involved. Yeah, it just usually we we have these days that we take that we go to my place or wherever we could go to the beach or something, take a guitar and take something that we can record the ideas that we get there from and. And and we just write these songs. We, we throw around ideas, and and something comes up. And uh, like Carnival of Rust, for instance, was written on the beach. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which and we is, introduced the idea to Captain. Yeah, who um, immediately started to feel the sort of vibe have, yeah, of the so song. So he's get, he, he gets an idea also of, of how this because because we 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 bring him the um, a, a version of the song where there's only the lyric and the guitar and then our ideas that we we're going to tell him that we'd like the uh, the strings to go like this and maybe there's a drum here and maybe there's something like there and then he listens to our ideas and he's he adds up his own uh, adds on his own ideas and, and it just flows from there and then we start arranging the song in the studio and yeah. so on actually about the song itself uh, i remember that we when we in, uh, introduced the song to captain he immediately said that uh this is good but you need uh you need a chorus there's no chorus there's just di- different types of verses and then we sat and th- thought for a minute and then i started to play that one thing and mark just by snap got the idea and this is how it's going to be and yeah. it's uh, it's actually on tape yeah that's right and th- there was this um this finnish film group actually who were there yeah, uh, they, the yeah making of the that record. thing and and it was just uh it, it's on it's on that tape and you could yeah. uh, you, they actually played it on tv and we were like you know don't play that it sounds <laughs> yeah. like crap you know it's because the idea wasn't ready at the moment we were yeah. just fiddling around with it you know fooling around and, but then again that's that's how the uh the song got written so is that a case of where lyrics came first than Carnival Rust? No, Carnival Rust is actually a song where the lyrics came like totally last. Last minute. Yeah. yeah. The, last I, I minute. had the name. Yeah, that's right. I had right. the name, but I didn't have anything to say about it until it had been cooking in my head for about four months or so. So the song was pretty much finished, but then I couldn't sing it because I didn't have the, I, I just had that, you know, I, I went like da, 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 like that, and there was no words until at one point we sort of had the deadline, and it's, it's going to have to be finished now, and and so I spent two nights writing the lyrics over and over again until I finally got the right lyrics, the, the thing that I sort of knew that I had inside me that I had to get out. Do you breathe the name
everything fades. That's a wonderful song. And is it like the lyrics? Are they personal or? Mm, yeah, they're very personal. Yeah. Uh, usually when I write the lyrics, they they are about something that's happened to me or someone very close to me, and I get an idea about that and, and or a feeling, and and I want to write about that. And this is just uh, about everything fades it's about sort of you know we, we we feel the pain but you know you shouldn't worry about those things because the world is in a constant you know perpetual change and and nothing lasts forever even the good things but never even the bad things so i mean you know you forget things the pain disappears and all that stuff and then it has some pointers to uh what causes the pain in people's lives and if we can identify these in our daily lives then we can actually get rid of them and and be happier that's what the song is about and how uh, how did you produce it was there any particular sound you were looking for in that song we uh we actually because um we just wanted to give it a very strong contrast you know yeah. Yeah. in between the uh the verse and the chorus and there's a story about that. I'd actually been watching a movie called Strange Days with Juliette Lewis on it. And, and, and you know, I'm a big fan of hers. And, and I met her at the EMAs this year, which was really nice. And she was nice to me. And we talked for some time and all that. But uh, in that movie, she she did this one too. And I, I can't remember what it was about or how it sounded or anything. But it just... Um, because I'd heard it like years before I wrote Everything Fades, but it just left this sort of mark on me that this is the kind of thing that I want to do at one point in my life. And so Everything Fades was that. And you, you know, it's it's all about that. And you know, very soft, very like toned down verse and then that huge explosion of a, of a chorus. Yeah, and I remember that uh, that was one of the... That was actually the first song after Late Goodbye that we did together. That was the uh, first actual song we kind of uh, did as a poet of the fall. Because uh, Late Goodbye was was a, was a kind that, of a yeah. beginning of the... Uh, That's where it got started, you know. It's, yeah, it's one I mean, of the first songs that, that we did. We did after we had this... Uh, yeah, and uh, Everything Fades was a song that we we did after we had decided that this is going to be Poets of the Fall, you yeah, and yeah. Captain. So it has a fresh sound to it, I think, cause, because of that matter. All right, so, uh, and Shallow. Oh, that's uh, my favorite song. What can you, yeah, that's one of my first as well. All right. Uh, well, tell me a little. I don't want to ask about the sound again, but just tell me a little about it. Shallow, shallow, shallow. That was, um, I'm trying to, because that was in my living room that we... Actually, my mom's living room because I was living at my mom's basement at the time. So we got <laughs> yeah. together in her living room and 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 we we uh, did the song. I think the uh, the idea of it came from from just something that you played on the guitar, and I started singing, and and then it took form when yeah, I sort of got right. the idea of what I was singing about, and so. But I really like the lyrics of that song; they're really uh, personal to me, and and I think it's one of the finest piece of you know poetry that i've written so you know yeah it's really beautiful uh, Thank you. Uh, did did it come afterwards like first the music or i think that came after yeah but i think it was one of those things that that i had it on the tape we had we, we played it on the tape and, and i had like some phrases there that i would listen to and then i'd realize okay this is what i want to say this is how it's going to be yeah i remember you had the phrase that uh, about being shallow or something yeah in the actual first recording of the yeah glad conversion. the waters are so shallow yeah. when the river runs so cold yeah and i remember this yeah. is good this is, this is a good idea and uh i'm i'm really glad we got that floating feel to this whole song yeah. about i that. actually used to have that because i had a clock radio that would play cds and you you could wake up to that so i i had shallow there the demo of shallow and and uh, I love the ending of it, you know, when it goes da 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 da, and I would just listen to that over and over again when I went to bed. I wouldn't want to listen to it when I woke up in the morning. It was like ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're moving on to the second album, Carnival of Rust. All right. Uh, did you have any uh, plans beforehand uh, with that one? Oh, we had a lot of plans before yeah. that one, but we didn't have that much time to, uh, you know. So we really rushed. 
or writing that album, which might have been a good thing because uh, yeah. that, that even that has been a learning experience for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Now that we're writing the third album, you know, when we we're not touring, we have days off or something, and then we're writing new material for the third album. We really decided, you know, that time when we got Carnival of Rust out of our hands, it went to the the printers, and um, then it came out. That that was the uh, the captain. I remember he said, that "I don't want to do anything like this ever again because it yeah. it was such a stressful experience yeah. because we didn't have that much time for to do it." Yeah, thank God we had so many songs uh, beforehand um, before we started to record them on studio, because otherwise it wouldn't been total. I don't mm. know. It was it was a total <laughs> um, really stressful time. Yeah, it but, was. But still, very but it was. A, I think it was a good thing because you can actually hear the pressure on the album. Yeah, that, that these guys really, you know, they're they're pressed to get this thing done. It's yeah. they're pushing it and. And it works out really, really nice. But we were literally the last night before we had to give it, uh, give it up, uh, or it wouldn't have come out at all. We yeah. were still in the studio writing the lyrics and, and yeah. singing and 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 doing the uh, the final, you know, mixes and all that. Yeah. And then we had to start mastering it and then put it out to printers and everything. So it was um, very, it was a hectic time, and it wasn't yeah. as much fun as it was doing the sec uh, the first album. Yeah, Even right. though this was fun, we had some good times, but yeah. But a lot of it was like, you know, guys, it's uh, it's getting late. Can we just like, you know, not fiddle around with those things and do this thing? And it was like work. Yeah. And it's not yeah, supposed it was, to be like that. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. If you want to be creative, I think it's it's not, not such a good thing to have such a big pressure on you. So how are you doing? So good of you to come over to the gig with us. So... I think we're gonna get warmed out now. Because we do have a very nice evening ahead of us. And this is a refreshing change from performing in front of 20,000 people to have this really warm and intimate club. You know, I can get off the stage easily and come and talk to you. Although I am afraid that the uh, PA system is gonna go haywire if I'm gonna do this. Rolling my eyes like a stone to the light. Do you hear the 
of Fools. You can tell me a little bit about that one. A fast track. It was easy to do, that one. Yeah, that was. I think from the minute we got the idea, um, you came up with the lyrics quite quickly. Yeah. And uh, I was really, we were really at, happy about yeah. the song. Cause, uh, we were at my place and Oli said that, you know, I, I got this la- this idea last night. He started playing on the guitar and I was on the computer doing something like reading email or something. And I was like, you know, I started, okay, let's put the uh, recording on. We just had to run downstairs and find yeah, my I old, because I had this down really set, old yeah. tape recorded thing, yeah. which, uh, w- which, which was actually covered in, in plaster yeah. and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. concrete, <laughs> because my brother had used it when he built his house. Uh, and so it was just like full of crap, but you could still get a tape inside uh, one, you know, an old C cassette, you know, you could yeah. that, get that inside and press uh, the record and you could record the songs there. And that's what we did. We had to, we ran downstairs and, and looked around the basement. Where the, where the hell is it? And, you know, because yeah. we were like, you, you, you have to get it done right now or you lose it. That's right. Yeah. So it was yeah, one the of those King things. Of Fools idea, I think it came instantly. Yeah, it did. During yeah. recording, actually, I I sang pretty much the the second verse. I sang as it is on the album, just there. So that was one of the very good moments. I yeah, remember. yeah. Uh, there is uh, my personal favorite actually on the album. Maybe tomorrow is a better day. All right. Uh, and that that began as a free internet download. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. Yeah. How how come? Well, I suppose at that time we had. Um, a lot of songs are on our hands and, and a lot of ideas in our heads and we wanted to give the uh, the fans because we'd had a very good year at that point and we wanted to give the fans uh, something for Christmas and and that was just, you know, we decided, hey, why not, you know, because we want to go to the studio and make more music, you know. Yeah, because we had al- almost finished the recording of uh, Science of Life. Yeah. We had to reschedule the... Uh, the release that's the release, right yeah, yeah it was we were supposed to release the album in october yeah but then we had to reschedule it until january and we decided yeah. that we want to give something give out something you know to uh, make up for the time that people had to wait for the album because we knew that there were a lot of people waiting for it and we had a chat session on the internet for about it, it was supposed to be one hour but it got to be two hours or something yes, yeah and we chatted uh, with people from all over the world and then we, after that we released the, uh, the the song on the net and it was like two minutes ago two minutes after we started getting emails from like india and <laughs> yeah, great song. Awesome. <laughs> yeah yeah but because it was only an internet download for a limited time and a lot of people wanted to have the song then we decided to put it on the second album all right so that's that's why you put it on yeah 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 and how, how did you write it like especially the oh, that was that's, a, that's a that's scary a story yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that is, that is. Uh, this is one again once again one of those things that we we sort of you know because we get together like like you know friends do and then we talk about this and we talk about that and you know what's bothering and what's what's a good and happy thing and, and what's happened to you during the past couple of days and so on and Ollie came over to my place and he had the guitar and said well I have this idea that I've been you know f- fiddling around with and to be honest I really didn't have any idea I was just yeah, y- yeah, he I, fooled I had, me. Yeah, <laughs> I've done it. I've done that for a few times. Yeah, just to be able to start it, start it, and and, and see if something comes, good comes out. Yeah, yeah sometimes, so sometimes. so I, so I took that seriously, and I I have this like pile of lyrics, old songs that I have, and I went that because I started singing one of those songs like a melody, and I said, wow, this sort of fits into that. Let me get the lyrics, and I got the lyrics that I written when I was seventeen. Uh, it was a huge plastic bag yeah. filled with songs. And I took that and I just sang it and it was there. Just like, yeah. what did you do, man? <laughs> yeah, that was that totally. Was totally it, was, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. And, and I, I took the lyrics and I revised, you know, some of it to sort of make it logical and, and fit, fit my, uh, you know, this, you know, how I am today, how I think today and, and so on. And, but it's pretty much the same song that it was like when I was 17. So that was that was cool. But it was really scary because I got goosebumps when we wrote that. It's yeah, like I remember that. that. This is totally awesome. I'm still I getting think. the chills when <laughs> yeah. I think about it. <laughs> yeah, that was so amazing. I think we managed to do such a good song in such a um, short yeah. blast of time. Yeah, it's, it. it's like, you know you start writing something years before and then it comes out at just like a few minutes years yeah, after just it just needed that time to sort of be rediscovered or something yeah. 
I do not deal the cards and I play a lousy hand I celebrate no victories and my promises are sand Against all this I contrast you when all is lost the war is through Dare the winds now we can fly This day we'll die tonight and there ain't no exception Why should I wait for nothing to wait for? Let me love you in this fable Hold your heart in my hand Our time is waiting right outside your door And maybe tomorrow Here's a better day Yeah, maybe tomorrow What songs are your favorites on the, on the current album? On the current album? Um, I could say that... Silence. <laughs> I, I could know. say, uh, definitely... Uh, Carnival I like, of Rust, I like that. Yeah, Carnival of Rust is one of one of the favorites. And then I like um, Dawn a lot. Yeah, I think it's, it's very touching and very which is, personal. Which is weird, because we've never even played that live. That's the only song that that's we've never played we've live. Never played. Yeah, that's right. We should But I like play. it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, yeah, and roses was one of the. Uh, that's right. Yeah. And I remember uh, we were on the beach <laughs> that that day when we. Yeah, we were. We wrote. That was actually your your original idea. Yeah, you but had almost the whole song. But the thing is that during that one one day on the beach, we wrote uh, Carnival, Carnival of Rust, Rust, Roses, Locking, locking up, up the, the Sun. sun. Yeah, they yeah. all came on that. On that. And day. that was. 2005 four. Or was it four? It, it might have been 2004 when he started yeah. the ideas. So, you know, yeah. we've had we those had ideas for a from long studios, time. Yeah. Uh, from recording The Science of Life. But we decided that, okay, we can't have more songs to The Science of Life. Yeah. But I guess that was 2004. It could have been. I don't remember anymore. But I really like Gravity and Delicious myself. Yeah, Gravity was. Yeah, Roses has been a favorite of mine for a long time as well. Uh, you end the album with Dawn, which is a very slow song, as well as uh, Sleep and uh, Signs of Life. Yeah. Is this a conscious decision? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's very absolutely. deliberate because yeah. you have Sleep and then after that comes Dawn. And it's, I think it's a very good ending for an album to sort of, because that's what you're listening when you're listening to it, well, whether in your car or, or especially if you're listening to it at your house where you can just be um, all by yourself and listen to the music and then you have this this very touching powerful song in the end which is kind of eases up into the end and then it just fades away and you're just left there like completely <laughs> vaporized <laughs> yeah we started working on that song uh, at 2003 actually in the recording session with uh it, it was something for a tv interview or so and we had a few it minutes was our, it was our first tv appearance ever or second maybe <laughs> One Second of the first. first. One of yeah, the first, of anyways. First. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I remember that we had a few minutes time to to check up the uh, tune for guitar and uh, make sure the microphone set up perfectly. And and I just started playing something. And uh, yeah, well, your story. Yeah, 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 we had this you riff, and the, I started singing. And yeah, and uh, but the, the it guitar, took a long time yeah. to finish the song. It, it, yeah, that's right, because we left out the whole guitar thing yeah, and all and that. I, yeah, and we couldn't get the right chorus to to the song. Yeah. I remember that we that was one of the, the last things times. that that was actually the last thing we did on the album. That was the the you know the middle part. Of the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was like yeah, two yeah. days to the al- album um, went to the to mastering. Yeah, and we were really in a rush. And I remember that we didn't have the uh, C part or the. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I'd been thinking about it for two weeks by that time, and just like every night when I went to yeah. bed, I was like, "How am I going to do that? How are yeah. we going to do that?" We knew that was coming. And then all of a sudden, when, when th- it's one of those cases when Ollie didn't have anything to say about it anymore, and Captain didn't have any ideas about it anymore, and I yeah. said, "Okay, then we're we're going to do this." And I went to the studio and I just explained what I want to do, and I sang it, and and Captain played it on the keyboard, and and it it really turned out just perfect, you know, yeah. just the way that I wanted to have it. So, uh, any plans for the third album? Oh yeah, we've already got a title, and I'm working on the cover. We got 
we had 40 songs for the for the third album now and we decided not to write anymore because that would yeah. make it impossible to ever finish the uh, the third album yeah, yeah it wouldn't be enough yeah but but we haven't gotten to the studio yet we're gonna take yeah. christmas off now from touring and we're gonna go to the studio in january but then we're gonna go on touring until um from february until september which is when we're gonna actually go and start uh, producing the the third album well, good luck tonight. What can Thank I say? You. Thank you. Welcome to Sweden. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.